Okay, guys, I want to explain um, something new to you today called the nitrogen cycle. And if you've never heard of it before, don't feel bad. I had not heard of it until I started teaching it. Well, I had heard of it. I just didn't understand it until I started teaching about it. And the nitrogen cycle, um, if you are a farmer or own farmland, it's pretty important to your job that you understand the nitrogen cycle. Now, some of you are going, well, I'm never gonna be a farmer. That's okay too. It's still really important to understand. Um, nitrogen is important for us as people to end up getting in our body, but the problem is, is that nitrogen is just floating around in the air and we can't get it in our body by just breathing it in. In fact, most of the air around us is nitrogen and we can't get it by breathing it in. So we have to get it by consuming it. So we're gonna talk about the different ways um, nitrogen can get into or cycle through the earth. That includes us. So um, I have a copy of this image filled out um, attached to this assignment. So after I explain it and after you watch the video, you can just print a version of it. But I like to write up here the nitrogen cycle. Okay, so this is really, really weird, but I'm gonna use a couple analogies for this and you're just gonna have to bear with me. It's kind of silly, but if this is a way that it helps you remember it, then so be it. Um, the first way that nitrogen's floating around the air can end up getting into, um, well, out of the atmosphere and into the ground is through lightning. And so this is what I usually say. Usually I say there's a bunch of nitrogens just kind of floating around in the air and I say they're like single. And sometimes you hear adults say to their friends that are single, oh, I've got this friend I want to fix you up on a date with. Well, if I use this example, lightning is the friend that says, oh, I've got somebody nitrogen, you, you're single right now. I've got somebody that I wanna fix you up on a date with. Their name is Oxygen. And when lightning strikes, it is able to combine nitrogen with oxygen. And I don't even know, this isn't a chemistry lesson, so sometimes I make the oxygen connect to the front, sometimes to the back. I don't know which way is the correct way at this point, but we'll just make them connect so that these nitrogens are no longer single floating around in the atmosphere. So the first set of notes that I'm gonna say is lightning. And we're gonna use the term fixes nitrogen up with oxygen. So what happens is lightning strikes, these two get fixed up, okay? And then basically when it rains, those nitrogen and oxygen combinations are able to fall to the ground. And when they fall to the ground, plants are able to soak them up into their roots and then they end up in plants. Plants are able to use the nitrogen that way. So let's take notes on that and then we'll talk more about it. Okay, so when it rains, that rain falls with the nitrogen and oxygen connected to it into the dirt, into the ground, and now plants are able to suck it up into what I'll call their little plant body, and now that plant has nitrogen in it. And then what happens is we come along, or an animal like a deer or a cow or whatever comes along and eats that plant, 
and now that animal or us can have nitrogen inside of their body. So we can't get our nitrogen by just simply breathing it in, but nitrogen is important to us. It helps us, I don't know if you've heard of DNA before, but it's something that helps us um, create strands in our DNA, nitrogen does. So it's pretty important to us. DNA is stuff that makes, makes decisions in your body like, oh, you're gonna have this color hair, or this color eyes, or, um, you know, you're going to end up being this tall when you get older or whatever. So anyways, nitrogen is important for us. Okay, so there's another way that we can get nitrogen. And this one's really weird as well. It's called legumes. Okay, now legumes are, if somebody is a, um, a vegetarian, they don't eat meat, right? Well, didn't I just say like... Um, if I ate certain plants that soaked up nitrogen from the dirt into their body, then I could get that nitrogen. Also, if this deer ate those plants and I came along and ate this deer, I could get the nitrogen from this deer's body by eating its meat or cow or whatever type of meat I decide to eat. But of course, vegetarians would not eat meat from this animal or from a cow. So they have to, and now just because you're not a vegetarian doesn't mean you can't eat the same thing, but they have to make sure that they're eating certain plants that have lots and lots of nitrogen in them. And those plants are called legumes. So for our second set of notes, oh, and what legumes are, and I'll show you in a few minutes, with the PowerPoint that I'm gonna show you, but they're these weird bumps on roots. So some plants have these really weird little bumps, these little nodules on roots. And I'll show you a picture of that in a little bit in the next video. So what happens in these bumps is there's bacteria in them. Now, when you hear bacteria, you usually think, oh, that's bad. But this bacteria feeds off the plant, which sounds bad, but actually the plant is able to get nitrogen inside of it. The bacteria gives off some nitrogen inside of it. So it's actually a good thing. This is good bacteria that lives in these bumps on these roots. And the bacteria fixes the nitrogen with the plant so it can be used by the plant. So it's kind of like the nitrogen is fixed up um, on a date by the bacteria, it says, oh, I've got a friend, these, these bumps on these roots, nitrogen, that I can fix you up with. And so the bacteria does that, and now these plants, these legumes is the name for these plants, they can get um, lots of nitrogen inside of them. So that's why if you were a vegetarian or a vegan, eating legumes would be really important because they have a ton of nitrogen in them. And we'll talk more about those in a minute, but let's take these notes here. Bacteria feeds off the plant and the plant gets nitrogen that it can use. And again, we're not used to this, but it's actually good bacteria. So we'll keep taking these notes, good bacteria. Because I would agree, when you hear the word bacteria, you think it's bad, but this time it's not. Good bacteria lives in the bumps on the roots. And bacteria is the one that fixes nitrogen up on a date. So fixes nitrogen so it can be used by plants.
And what I usually like to do, I, it's not necessarily a tree, but this is the plant that I'm deciding to pretend has these roots coming out of it. We'll make a couple above ground. Sometimes you know how trees get roots out of the ground and we're just gonna draw these fake little bumps on them. And this is not what it looks like at all. I will show you a real life picture of these bumps on these roots, but this is what we're gonna just draw it like right now. Okay, and we can give this tree some of it too. There's a root coming out with some bumps. When I go in the gray part, it's hard to see, but you get the gist of it. Okay, so that is two ways that nitrogen can get out of the atmosphere and down into earth, and then people could consume um, these plants or animals could consume these plants and then we could consume those animals and then we get the nitrogen in our body or we could straight up eat these legumes which have tons of nitrogen in them and we could get nitrogen that way. So there's two ways. So I've talked about getting nitrogen out of the atmosphere. Now we have to talk about once that nitrogen is inside um, an animal or inside of us, how does it end up back floating around in single up in the atmosphere again? Because you know lightning's not striking all the time. So how does it end up back in the atmosphere? So hold on because this one's a gross one. We're gonna call this one animal bodies. All right, so we got a couple options with this one. So unfortunately, we might have an animal like this deer that has eaten either legumes or eaten plants that ended up with nitrogen inside of them. And then this animal got nitrogen inside of its body. Well, unfortunately, this animal could die. So sometimes in cartoons, I see animals with X's over their eyes and that represents that they're dead. So that's what I'm gonna do to this poor little deer here. We're gonna pretend right now that this deer has died. And so what happens um, when this deer dies is it decomposes. And as the bacteria comes in and decomposes the deer, it will release nitrogen, single nitrogen, by the way, back up into the atmosphere. So under animal bodies, we're gonna say dead animals. Okay, now, before I go on, there's another option. This could come from a live animal. So for a second, pretend I didn't kill him off. Let's pretend this deer's alive. This one's even grosser if you thought the dead thing was disgusting. Sometimes, no, not sometimes, all the time, when an animal has eaten legumes or eaten other plants with nitrogen in it, of course they're gonna have waste. And that waste is, you guessed it, filled with nitrogen. So I'm going to draw, I'm not very good at this, but that's my little pile of deer poop right here. Okay, and we're gonna just pretend, I'm gonna make some ends. Oops, sorry, that's not a good end. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna draw little ends around it. So it's like coming straight from his rear end, ending up in the poop down here. And nitrogen, when this poop starts getting decomposed, there's nitrogen in it too. And that gets released back into the atmosphere as single nitrogen. So we said dead animals and animal waste have built up nitrogen. Okay, and then bacteria that comes in either decays this dead animal or starts, it's gross, I know, but decaying the animal waste comes in and releases that nitrogen. So bacteria 
releases the nitrogen into the air. So it can get used again. Okay, and that nitrogen floats all the way back up here. So we'll just make some ends floating up here. It's released. And now it is single again, waiting for its friend Lightning to fix it back up on a date. And the whole cycle starts all, excuse me, starts all over again. So that is a quick overview of the nitrogen cycle. It will make more, more sense when you watch my next video and you see the slideshow that goes along with it.